You can see in the game, there's some pretty badass options you can pick from, <laughs> not you. And one of my favorite new offerings is the dynamic plate carrier. Dan over at Dynamic Principles is just a fantastic dude, and he's making some just totally amazing, very compliant gear that's really pushing the envelope in terms of design and innovation. For the dynamic plate gear, I have a setup similar to the Ready or Not loadout, but with some small changes. I'm using the same Micro Molly placard and three mag insert, along with the same small tourniquet attached along the bottom. You could also customize this easily if you wanted to and add in admin pouches or mag pouches just using this front molly panel. But hey, we're staying true to the loadout, so surprisingly, I actually kept it slick. Hey there, my favorite cane-wielding toad tossers. Today I got one for you where we can set up and go over a <laughs> super serious loadout. It's a shakedown, you could say, but like way, way more serious. Today we'll be setting up a ready or not loadout with our Dynamic Principles carrier to see how it fares. Well, some of this I had to swap out because one, I, I didn't have that thing, or two, it just, just didn't make any sense. Like who exactly is putting a prick 152 on their back? It'll be fun and we can also compare some practicality when we look at some different mission sets in like CQB or SWAT style loadouts. CQB configurations can vary pretty wildly from a more military centric loadout. And I'll explain why I use some bits and why I swapped out some other stuff to some newer stuff that I found. Now, for those of you that don't know, let's eat this meme directly in the face and answer, what the heck is ready or not? Ready or Not is a team-based PC game focused on semi-realistic scenarios with a heavy, heavy focus on CQB use and team deployment. This is where I usually get with viewers who will come to class with me so we can work through complex situations together and work our brain processing speed. Like we talked about in our CQB video, you have to constantly exercise the mind. And by practicing in these scenarios, it's a lot easier to have that brain power to recognize the shapes and then easily flow through the rooms. Yes, you weird boomer, even in a video game. We even got with the Defensive Elements team and they showed us how to flow from a two-man team to a five-man group. And we even tackled some unique interior elements using the same basic principles and shapes that they taught us. So it was really cool of Jesse to join our viewers and do that. And I'll put a link up here to that event we did on Discord if you wanna check it out. And I'll put a link to it down in the description. Now, before we get into it though and go over this whole setup and some tweaks I did for some super, super cool stuff, let's take a moment, thank today's sponsor. Today's video was sponsored in part by Nocturne Industries. Nocturne offers you a wide range of products from the lightweight katanas to the modular dice show configuration, all the way to the industry disrupting quad chimeras. Regardless of if you're just beginning your journey into night vision or you're an operational professional, Nocturne Industries has you covered. I did finally do a full review on the Manicore R housing if you wanna watch that video and get smarter on some of the new Nocturne offerings. And as always, you can use discount code TLDCO over at nocturneindustries.com. Much love to Nocturne for supporting the channel. And they're probably the only company cool enough to sponsor a video about ready or not loadouts. Uh, the next part is usually where I talk about biases and I have so much stuff that I probably do like or don't like that I'm, I'm just absolutely sure that I have biases. So as always, make sure to watch other people's videos. We're, <laughs> we're really just screwing around today. Now, one cool bit about Ready or Not is that they use realistic bits of gear like helmets, carriers, and even different tops that allow you to set up your gear similar to your real life configuration. I say similar because I do wish there was some more gear that I could select from, particularly the battle belts. I mean, no one wants a bison belt. I mean, it's nice they renamed it to a Shaw bison belt at least. Whatever, I don't want to pick on the developers because I love this whole idea, but yeah, they definitely need a DM mech belt in there for sure. All right though, let's get into the loadout and talk about the gear to give you some ideas for your own setups and talk about some of the parts that I switched out for some better options. Kind of like how they don't have the Mark I sunglasses in the game, these are fantastic. But let's do this whole loadout backwards and start from the bottom and work our way up. In our game loadouts, we have our brown LSPD boots. If we look at them, they're actually the Loa Zephyrs in real life. The Zephyrs saw an upgrade to the Mark II, I think last year, and that's what I have my brown boots in. Are the Mark IIs a ton better than the Mark Ones that I still wear? No, they're, <laughs> they're pretty similar but there are some nice upgrades and both sets of Zephyrs have taken an absolute beating for years. So if you're looking at boots, these are just a fantastic option. 
Just don't get the waterproof ones unless you're super excited about having foot sweat trapped in your boot. Waterproofing can actually be super bad and you'd be surprised to learn that like 99% of most users don't actually want that. I'll say this as a good rule of thumb. If you don't know if you want waterproofing, you, you probably don't want it. Moving to pants, in our game loadout, we have the Cerro Tori L5 pants, which I think are the Patagonias, but Patagonia was super mad that Patagonia made military gear, which was super, super weird. So I just decided I'm not gonna wear the latte and turtleneck pants, even, <laughs> even if they are good. The fantastic version I am wearing are the Beyond Systems A9A combat pants. These offer a slim athletic fit that also stretches in all the right places for when things get a little crazy. I have like two or three pairs of these and they are definitely my favorite duty pants. Now the Beyond A9 tops have made it into the game, so I'm hoping the Beyond A9 bottoms make it in there also. Another badass option are the Audi Gear downrange pants. These are super, super new, but they're also one I really like a lot. Plus the Audi Gear ones, unlike the Patagonias, aren't designed for drinking coffee with a straw. Oh yeah, I forgot to say, I'm gonna leave a link to all this stuff down in the description, but next, let's take a look at our whole belt setup. In our Ready or Not game loadout, we're wearing the LSPD Shaw belt, which upon closer inspection is a Faro Bison belt, but with Shaw pouches on the side, with a Safariland QLS holster and some various medical and mag pouches. Seeing how we're the Battle Belt Review Channel, we're gonna take this whole thing up a level with our whole belt setup. Plus, I just don't wanna use that horrible holster mounting system that just digs into your hip. To keep with the same style, but using something insanely better, we have the Agilite Magnetics belt that uses a similar styling. We're also using the new Guardian Warriors Solutions Bang Hanger that's been upgraded to the Curve material. Now, I've noticed this in seeing some material changes in battle belts and some other equipment, that people seem to think that curve is some sort of material downgrade when they don't see the crappy carbon fiber anymore. Tegris actually has some problems where it has a memory and can form some weak spots. Like if you set the belt down, when you pick it up, it'd be like all locked in that same formation that it was sitting in on the ground. Then you have to like manhandle the whole thing back in place so it fits around your body again. And curve doesn't have that issue, which results in a much longer longevity of the whole material. So in our bang hanger setup, the curve gives us even more strength while also allowing it to be just as flexible as before, making getting into vehicles easy and not having our holster system just actively fighting against us. The bang hanger is also directly integrated into our QLS system with our Safari Land 6360 RDS holster with our Bull Armory 2024 EDC with the four and a quarter barrel. Oh, this little guy? Yeah, you guys got a video on this next week. I will tell you now, yes, it is awesome though. Ready or Not only lets us pick a 1911 with the RMR and a flashlight from uh, 1972. So hopefully we see some upgrades in the game to have some of the crazy good stuff that we have here on our pistol. Now for my belt pouches, this is kind of crazy because they're so secret, they don't even have a name yet. And honestly, I don't think I'm supposed to talk about them. That's probably smart because I leak horribly. Now with these pouches, you can do all kinds of cool stuff. <laughs> So yeah, now you know why these pouches are just ridiculous. And I figure I'd just let the cat out of the bag. Just don't tell anybody I told you though, cause you know, super secret stuff. I will say this whole belt setup from holster to medical to pouches is completely ridiculous and totally on brand. Wait, wait, is the magazine on the side backwards in the game? Here we go, I'll fix that. Oh, perfect. Now our magazine will do some completely ridiculous stuff whenever I need it. All right though, let's take a look at our combat top. Now in the game, we have on what is listed as the GX combat shirt. They have the L9s in the game also, which is what I actually have on. But for some reason, only the goofy camel colors are in the correct pattern with the multicam being a solid color. So the GX shirt is closer, plus the two flags, it's just a little bit much. Got that double America. Much like the pants, I really like the fit of the A9A top, and both of these have survived just an absolute beating from different training and field days to like 100 different range outings. The A9A also comes in an equatorial version if you want a lighter weight top, along with a waffle top version if you need something for much colder climates. 
the equatorial stuff is kind of like the cry G4, if you want to know, like an equivalent to that. It's kind of like that half PJs, half window curtain material. Are either the G4 or the equatorial super good in the hot? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Are they better than the warmer stuff? Sure. Moving down to the gloves in our game, we have the Rooster FDT gloves and Multicam, which are actually the Pig FDT Alpha gloves. Now, I really like the Alpha gloves because it's a blend between the lower profile gloves Pig makes and a full-size glove. So you still have the finger dexterity, but it also gives you that nice padded knuckle on the front of the glove. These are just really nice, and unlike some others, I wouldn't be concerned about just getting to work in these gloves. Now, hilariously, I also bought the Pig Delta gloves in this horrible poop brown because I had them in game. <laughs> Didn't realize you could unlock the other ones. Now, these Delta gloves, well, well, don't do the poop brown ones, but they lean super hard into dexterity above all else, which makes them great for shooting pistols or rifles because you have a nice thin glove to protect your hand. Now, though, I said dexterity above all else, and that also means above durability. These deltas cannot take a beating, and if you're doing some rough work, these are absolutely not the gloves you want. These are like cake-making gloves. I even have some super pricey triple aught design topo deltas, and look, they're fraying for me just daring to use them for some pull-ups. But now that I think about it, I suppose that's pretty on-brand too. Triple aught design, where they sell you an overpriced shirt and mark it up eight times the cost, because, because no reason at all. I had to make sure I wasn't wearing my triple lot design hat because that would have been hilarious. But then I remembered I had this whole helmet set up on. I'm not wearing these horrible gloves anymore. These are god awful. All right, but all joking aside, the Ranger LT jacket is just fantastic. And yes, it's as badass as it looks. Oh, I also have this DM park I'm not allowed to talk about. I tell you right now, this video is gonna get me in trouble. All right, let's look at the carrier next. And this thing is absolutely awesome. You can see in the game, there's some pretty badass options you can pick from, <laughs> not you. And one of my favorite new offerings is the Dynamic Plate Carrier. This directly mimics the DPC I have on made by Dynamic Principles. Dan over at Dynamic Principles is just a fantastic dude, and he's making some just totally amazing berry compliant gear that's really pushing the envelope in terms of design and innovation. So yes, keep an eye out for a full plate care review on this, and no, I don't have a discount code for you yet. I keep getting told to stop leaking things. All right, let's go take a look at this loadout. For the dynamic plate carrier, I have a setup similar to the Ready or Not loadout, but with some small changes. I'm using the same Micro Molly placard and three mag insert, along with the same small tourniquet attached along the bottom. You could also customize this easily if you wanted to and add in admin pouches or mag pouches just using this front Molly panel. But hey, we're staying true to the loadout, so surprisingly, I actually kept it slick. Now, some folks may notice the whole setup only has four mags, three up front and one on the belt. I already know some Reddit fart queen is just absolutely losing their mind. But think of a realistic CQB loadout where you have one bad guy or in the most insane of situations, two. And even with the game throwing like 15 enemies at you at each level, I still only run four mags. Assuming each of the 15 guys takes five rounds total to put down, that means I only need 75 rounds, and that's if my accuracy is just complete trash. And that still leaves me with a full mag and a half. So yeah, I've never ever run out of ammo, even when I run a loadout of four. It's just a totally different mindset as you're not like laying down suppressive fire. You know, it doesn't matter. Some loser's still gonna leave me some eight page comment down below. So let's just move to the next thing and look at the whole comm setup. Now in the game, there is an oddball 3M Peltor speaker PTT on the front of this carrier. That thing is like $600 and I don't think this whole joke is good enough for me to spend $600 on some crappy Peltor speaker I don't want. So instead, we have this gem with the Poltac PTT that uses a standard U94 headset connector and a large push-to-talk button. Yeah, but these are still expensive just for the joke. Good grief. But I guess now at least we don't have some silly speaker that's giving away our position inside of a building, and we can actually integrate all of this into our headset comm system. 
First though, let me show you this. The PTT flows down and I have it all integrated into a standard Baofeng using a Kenwood two pin connector. Now is using a Baofeng radio realistic? No. Is it gonna make radio FUDs mad? Absolutely, 100% yes. Is that the best part? Also yes. My Baofeng setup is just about as realistic as having a full Prick 152 stuck to your back though, so we'll just call it a wash. For my antenna setup, we used a cattail antenna SMA adapter and antenna relocation cable, and then ran our antenna up and out to the rear of the carrier, so we have a similar configuration to the game. The antenna is completely in the way though, and Will over at Cattail Antennas makes some way better options than having some stupid antenna poking you in the helmet all day. When you're not doing a stupid meme build, you can do some smarter stuff like on my cry setup, where you can instead weave the wearable antenna through your gear and have the end sticking out behind your helmet. That setup on my cry is just far less annoying, and yeah, it probably has less range, but again, we're looking at more of a CQB setup in teams where miles and miles of range probably just isn't required. Somebody's gonna ask too if they're gonna add the new Cry R line to the game. And I'll tell you, if they already have the JPC or the SPC, it's, uh, it's already in there. I'm totally off topic at this point, but paying $2,000 for the same thing they made eight years ago is an absolute joke. Sorry, let me try to get back to our comms. Here's our PTT that ties into our OpsCore amps. We'll show off in a moment using our connectorized headset. This gives you a full radio system that you can easily access while also not giving away your position. So then our sound is enclosed because <laughs> speakers and CQB is kind of stupid. All right, though, what else do I have on here? Oh, I also have these Snake Staff Systems tourniquets in this little pouch up front. In the game, it has the tourniquet attached to the back of the carrier, but I'm fairly certain that my body doesn't bend that way. I also moved the chem lights on the rear straps to up front on the placard. Well, one of these anyway, but yeah, having these up front is a lot more useful than having them hidden in the back where I can't get to anything. Oh, did you see? They gave me flashbangs. Big mistake. Better run, bitches. What? I thought you said these were fake. <laughs> On the rear of our Ready or Not setup, we have two flashbang pouches, and we set up our carrier to mimic that setup with two dynamic principles, pimps, flashbang pouches. Probably a good thing for my whole team. I 100%, <laughs> there's no way I can't reach those. Oh, the last bit I added in was the juggernaut mount and phone case to the front of the carrier. Interestingly, it's not on the front of the carrier in the game, but it's there whenever you're looking at your mission notes whenever you're playing. So that's our whole carrier setup, and I'm really pretty impressed by the DPC and how well it's put together. So definitely keep an eye out for the review of this guy. Oh, hold on. Let's talk plates, because these, whoo, these are badass. The plates that make this whole carrier nuts are the SRT lightweight plates from RMA Armament. These guys are just two and a half pounds, but are rated to stop 762 and even M193. For two and a half pounds, it's just hilarious the level of protection these plates give you. And it just makes the whole DPC insane in terms of its whole capabilities. Yes, discount code TLDCO on the SRT plates, but be warned, they go out of stock quickly, so watch out for those. All right, let's finally move into the piece everybody was waiting for, our helmet and night vision setup. In the game, we're using the OpsCore Fast Helmet in Multicam. There are also a few other helmet options, but it's funny that they all use some variation of the arc rail system. Hmm, I wonder why that is. Oh yeah, it's because it's the best. There are also a ton of variants and styles, and I settled on this one with the amps, Princeton Tech Charge X, Hellstar Strobe, and this Contour helmet camera. I feel like that setup is, well, well it's an option, but it's certainly lacking in some areas. For my setup, I use the same Opscore SF helmet, but used an Agilite helmet wrap to give it that multicam color. I connected in the same Princeton Tech Charge X on the right side to give us red, blue, green, white, along with IR and a task light. On the left, we have the Surefire X300 Vampire Pro on a very arc mount to give me an IR or white light that can be used to light up a room or have canopy spill. Since night vision auto gates the light, having a bright ass light hitting you directly usually dims everything else, so by angling it upward and bouncing the light, you can get the same lighting effect while not having auto-gating issues blinding all your buddies who are next to you. 
Now, I found the X300 Vampire works really well for this, particularly in like a CQB room where you want to light everything up and, you know, not <laughs> blind everybody next to you. But it's bulky and it's, God, it's really expensive. So I actually have some other helmet lights from Princeton Tech that we can test out soon to see if we can get a lighter weight system, but similar performance. Maybe we'll even see what the rail link can do. I can't, I'm not, not allowed to say anything. Wouldn't, wouldn't that be weird? Some other great options are the Streamlight Stock or the MPLS. And like I said, we'll test all these guys out in terms of performance in a later video. Mostly because this one's too long already and I've already talked about like 20 things I'm not supposed to. On the rear of my helmet, I'm also using the TNVC Mohawk counterweight with an array of spare batteries as my additional weight. You really need this to offset the weight of your night vision, particularly if you're using some older, heavier styles like in our game configuration. We can also see he's using a Hellstar 6 strobe, and I'm using the SNS Manta attached to a Jawless Hog retention lanyard. Now, I'll say this. I think a helmet strobe in CQB would be the most obnoxious thing on the planet. Just imagine this, your buddy in front of you with a big flashing beacon, just making your nods autogate every two seconds. You know what you do? You tell them to turn that crap off so you can actually see something. Now, in like a wide open field, I could see that more so you could track your team and be able to see where everybody's located at. But for most people, I think the strobe is nonsensical. And with helmets and, and night vision all being so insanely expensive, I really think you should put the strobes as like the last thing on your list if, if it's even on the list at all. But wow, well, you might say. But what if I have to jump out of an airplane? Oh, yeah, you're, you're right, Ronnie. M my mistake, my mistake. Yeah, you totally need one of these. For everybody else with a brain, though, a cheaper and less obnoxious option is to just use a chem light attached to the rear of your helmet. Then you have some peer indication, but not some big-ass expensive light just flashing in front of you. Moving up, we're also using an upgraded housing for our night vision with the Nocturne Industries Manicore R. Hey, that's our sponsor! With everything connected in using the same Wilcox G24 light from the Ready or Not configuration. The G24 light is probably my favorite in terms of night vision mounts, but good God, is it expensive for what it is. I already made a video where I talked about this Manicore R housing and all of its features for like 20 minutes, and I'll make sure to link it up here if you wanna learn more about the Manicore R, how it works and all its features, and more about the Nocturne offerings. I'll just say these are awesome and lightweight and super fun to use. All right, though, let's move to our last category, and this is our eyewear. In the game, they let you pick between some Oakleys, I don't know, some Amazon specials, and some weird glasses to match the Patagonia pants for some reason. For my setup, we're using something far better than glasses that look like they were designed for eating soup with the actual ballistic-rated OpsCore Mark Ones. The Mark Ones give you modular lenses to be able to swap out between black, white, high contrast, or even laser dazzle, so you can adapt to literally any mission set. Another option is the Opscore Step Advisor with the photochromic lens that changes in tints based on the UV light. The photochromic Step Advisor is probably the best dynamic solution you can get if you wanna have both ballistic and like sun protection. Like they work so well if you're moving from, you know, like bright outdoors to a dark indoor CQB environment and they just change and adapt from dark to clear in just like seconds. Well, goodness though, I think that was our whole ready or not configuration. And it was fun to talk about our whole kit and why we chose certain things and why we would set certain things up in the configuration that we did. I also wanna give a big thanks to Dynamic Principles, OpsCore, Princeton Tech, Nocturne, and all the other companies that help us put this badass kit together. Let me know down in the comments if I missed explaining something or if you have just general questions about why I configured something in a certain way. The answer is probably because I'm left-handed. That's probably the number one answer. Stay tuned though as we dive into a full review of the Dynamic Principles DPC, along with testing out the performance of different helmet mounted lights. If you stick around, I'll also talk about these pouches that uh, shall not be named. I guess we actually have to talk about rifle loadouts at some points too. Whoops, we, we just ran out of time. We'll get to there, I'm sure, but I hope this video on the ready or not Dynamic Principles loadout was helpful in your purchasing decisions. I wanna say thanks to all of our Patreon members and our YouTube members. You make it possible we can try all this stuff out, 
put all these configurations together, learn what works and what doesn't, and then let you know so you can buy the best stuff. And I don't wanna say thanks to everyone that likes, comments, and subscribes. Comment down below what piece of this kit you would improve. I wanna hear about it because I wanna change it out and test it out. All right, everyone, Walsh out. There is actually an air show practice going on right now. Just, it's not even a joke. Like, that's what's happening. Air show practice. Unless there's not enough flying around things. It's cloudy as hell. You can't see anything. Oh, my watch. Oh, this is a, it's, it's a fancy one. Uh, it's not in the game for some silly reason. Uh, Garmin Tactics Delta. I think like the Phoenix 7 or something is the new super expensive one. And no, I, I don't wear it upside down. That's, that's weird. It's super weird. Nobody does that. All right, though, I hope this was fun. I enjoyed putting all this kit together, making this kind of ridiculous video and kind of going a little bit over the top. But it shows you what different kit options are out there and what pieces are kind of Instagram-y. Like a lot of the lights and the strobes and all that, it's really not required unless you're jumping out of airplanes and seeing it on a helmet. Usually I'm, I'm wondering like what they're doing. I do it just because I'm a moron, but like most people, you don't need that. Save your money on the strobes, put it towards your night vision, put it towards some high quality lights. Um, yeah, but yeah, we'll test some more stuff out. I really wanna see if these Princeton Tech ones can compete with the Surefire X300s because these are stupid expensive and stupid heavy. And there just needs to be, there really needs to be a leap forward in terms of technology. And honestly, I'm hoping that the rail link brings us that because there needs to be some much better and slimline solutions that don't cost a bajillion dollars. It's, I don't know if it's gonna rain or not gonna rain, and it's hot out here. Oh, I didn't have my gloves on. I lost those at some point. Oh, well, I mean, I know where they are. I just didn't put them back on. Okay, you gotta go.